Hey guys, welcome back. And to my shock, to my delight, we've got 85,000 subscribers. I can't believe it. Yeah, boy. Looking forward to hitting 100K so that we can put a plaque that YouTube sends me uh, behind me and I'll be able to do a critique on the design of that plaque. Anyway, today we're gonna to be looking at the Bugatti Bolide. This is a car that makes the Bugatti Chiron poor sport look even tame. Bolide means flaming fireball. Bugatti claims that this car is designed with a notion of form follows performance. I would have to disagree. I think this car definitely is the ultimate statement of form is performance. In other words, the performance and the form are symbiotic. The Bolide is an evolution of the Vision Gran Turismo concept. It's actually designed to conform to the real rules of the real world. In other words, FIA uh, regulations, and so it is drivable, it should be drivable, and it definitely pushes the design envelope. This car absolutely blows me away. It's definitely an ultimate Bugatti for me. It's obviously a great test bed for future technologies. You can see it all over this vehicle. It holds itself together very well. When I look at it from the front, the first thing I notice is that iconic Bugatti horseshoe grille. But then you start to look at it and you start to notice things about it that are very, very freshly done for Bugatti, yet it doesn't jump outside of what Bugattis are today. And if we look at it from the front, the first thing you're gonna notice is all these intakes that are absolutely performance oriented. They're not on there for any gimmick or any show. You can actually read and follow where the air is going on this vehicle. You can see how much they thought out the aerodynamics of the vehicle and the heat transfers out the back. You can see how the air works in and around the vehicle. You can see how they've concentrated on minimizing surfaces. You can see how they concentrated on keeping the capsule, sort of the greenhouse, very, very tightly around the driver and the passenger. The advantage of minimizing surface is that you're reducing frontal area. Frontal area equates to drag. So the more you can reduce the amount of material you have facing the wind, you're gonna get a better efficiency of, of aerodynamics, of, of less drag basically. Every slot, every opening has a definite purpose to it. I like that about this car. You can actually see how technical it is. I don't know, less than 50% of this car is actually painted. Most of it is actually uh, visible carbon fiber. So there's an extreme attention to taking care of reducing the weight in this vehicle, not only in the materials, obviously there's a lot of use of titanium alloy, but look at all the negative spaces on this vehicle, spaces where there's nothing there, no, no surface. And that is absolute purposeful design. And that's what this vehicle obviously is all about. It's designed to be an absolute weapon on the track. Now let's look at the front headlights. You can see that they're obviously designed with some aesthetics in mind, but at the same time, there is a almost purpose and, and reason for it to look like that. We've got an X over the headlight design or as the headlight design. That relates back to the Tipo 35 that they had where we, back in the days, I guess they needed to put tapes over the headlight lenses in case you had a cracked lens. When we look at that, it gives it, again, its own personality, its own character, but very unique. And then start to look at the car and see where the air goes into it and where it comes out of it. You can look through the intakes on the bonnet, on the hood, and you can see that they actually go through past the wheels into the sides of the car. Now that's even more complicated because it goes into the door, which you don't really see unless you open the door. And that you'll see that you have almost a double layered door where the air actually channels through the door itself. Crazy design, but it definitely works. It's a great way to control the passageway of the air. Obviously you have that canopy, that tight, almost like a jet fighter pilot canopy, which looks great on this car, but you have that snorkel intake on the roof. Sucks in air, clean air, clean, cool air. It's smooth, it's good at low speed very low drag, but as you speed up the car, little bubbles that raise above the surface of that snorkel will start to inflate. The car is actually responding to the requirements. It's actually becoming more aware of the situation and it's helping you, it's responding to you. It's a way of giving more awareness to an inanimate object. It's almost like magic. So another feature as we walk around this, this monster of a vehicle, this breathtaking, spectacular, mind-boggling vehicle. Now this vehicle 
is not even a meter tall. It's something like 995, if I'm not mistaken. And if you think about that, that is actually quite a bit lower than the Ford GT. If you remember the GT40, which was 40 inches tall, I mean, this is even lower than that, and that car was low. Now, as we walk towards the back of the car, still seeing all these interesting angles, these interesting lines that cross over each other, you'll see the, the fin coming off the center of the vehicle and going towards the rear wing. Now, all Bugattis, or, or as much as I can, far back as I can remember, have a very typical, very, very iconic almost spine running down the middle of the car. And you can see that on this car, there's definitely a center line that is marked that you notice that comes straight down the middle of the car from the very front to the very back. And that fin picks up this line as it goes back and connects with that rear spoiler. Now this spoiler is very special, but look at it and you can see that it goes from side to side. It is extremely wide and you can look at it from behind. I mean, it is just an awesome sight. I think this shot of the car from behind is the most stunning view of this car without a doubt. Look at that rear end. Look at how those wheels, the rear wheels, have that stance on the road. They're just out there. This car will never tip over. And that diffuser, my gosh, have you ever seen a diffuser with three layers to it on a production car? This is awesome. Look at the complexity, the engineering, the design that went into that rear diffuser underneath there. It is something wicked. I love it. The next beautiful thing I like on this car, probably one of the outstanding elements again of it, are the rear taillights. Now, they go hand in hand with the front headlights. They're X featured. They have that X theme running through the whole car. There are a lot of parts along this car. If you want to have fun, try to pick out all the elements on the car that do that. It is very, very special. It's very unique. I mean, unique. We all know this guy here, so I don't know how much we can say it's unique, but at the same time, you probably haven't seen a plane too often flying around like that. I can imagine in the design studio, in the design process of, the, uh, of this car, the Bolide, that it must have been one of the funnest times ever in the history of car design. In the end, when you look at this car, stand back, who cannot love a car like this? I mean, it is absolutely, like I said, mind boggling to be able to see a car like this in 3D. So I can't think of another car that has ever come out that has achieved what this car seems like it's going to be able to achieve to do, which is incredible performance. And this car is going to be an absolute monster on the track. And in Bugatti's pursuit of optimal aerodynamics, look at the wheels on this car. I love the wheels, not because of the way they look, but for what they do. Now these wheels are very special. Obviously they're flush-ish and they have a single lock center nut on them, which is very racing oriented, very track oriented. But the coolest thing about them is that they're actually designed with the little blades on the exterior outer perimeter to actually suck the air out of the inside of the wheel wells, out of the brake, hot brake area. So we can tell that Bugatti is working at the pinnacle of design and engineering when they're able to turn a wheel cover into something that is absolutely tops in function and in innovation. So chapeau to Bugatti for that. So in conclusion, I think you can figure, I think you can realize, I think you can see that this car really turns me on. Seeing that it's not out on the road yet, so I don't know if it's gonna be actually feasible to turn it into, let's call it a homologated uh, car that we can actually drive. So in terms of giving this car a rating, I'd love to give it a 10. Obviously I'm over the moon with it. But if I was to give it a high, high rating, that means no modifications. And with this car, I still would look at doing a few little things to it. The one thing in the front that I would change is perhaps the headlight area. In other words, I don't dislike the X. I really love that design, but I think those are more suited to daytime running lamps. In other words, what I would like to have is an additional very thin beam of laser, laser lights that you could insert, have those as your long distance headlights that would add, I think, a little bit more character that you could use. The center scoop, the snorkel, the roof snorkel. What I would do there is probably try to make the air intake area around there a little bit more aggressive. The moment is just kind of poking forward, and I think it needs to be a little bit more dynamic, a little bit more aggressive, something that actually looks like it's grabbing the air and sucking it in, something a little bit with more bite. 
So one of the things I would look into on the rear exhaust system is innovating on the rear exhaust system itself. In other words, maybe introducing a corrugated tube section to the rear, in other words, where the rear nozzle is, much like they do in aircraft design. You could get a different noise signature at lower speeds as you would at higher speeds, much like they have on a scramjet. Here, this exit of the jet nozzle at the back for the exhaust, you can control the amount of pressure coming out. And so that in itself would, would give you different noise characteristics, different performance characteristics, accounting for these just very slight aesthetic modifications. I would have to give the bolide probably top marks. Top marks for me on a vehicle like this, 9.9. So let me know what your thoughts are on the Bolide. I don't expect too many people to be against it because I think there are, there are a lot of people that will find it hard to criticize the Bolide. But at the same time, again, there'll be enough people with a little bit of change in their pocket that would love to be able to add this car to their collection. It's an amazing vehicle. Let me know in the comments below what you think and I look forward to seeing them. And again, thanks for watching.